Yo, guys, it's Sarge, you know, today we're back playing some more Raging Loop. On the last time, I believe we made it through our first feast as a wolf. Uh, nobody got hanged, and so now <clears throat> we have all the after feast stuff. Um, and I'm hoping that we can make it to the night, and that way we can experience what really happens uh, when we are a wolf at night. So, let's go. Uh, I've also, like, been receiving some comments saying that this is, like, multiple people's, like, favorite routes, and that they're really excited for this, so I cannot wait for, like, whatever is about to happen in this entire, like, loop. So let's go. Uh, the dining hall was a much more pleasant place than it was in the morning. Yasubis was a place full of decent people who uh, readily accepted the idea that they wouldn't have to kill anyone today. The same applied to the wolves, that's what I thought, but they didn't look so good. Uh, that's an interesting science. Uh, you've been to the seminars? Yes, they were led by uh, Kimiyoshi-sensei. Uh, Kimiyoshi-san, I'm pretty sure a Japanese person I met in Alasa was a college lecturer with that name. Oh, that has to be him. He specializes in Sino-Tibetan languages, so he travels there every now and then. I see, what a small world. At least to people like you and him. Another reason was Hashimoto-san. Once he stopped being silent, he turned out to be an extremely sociable. And, uh, he turned out to be extremely sociable and understanding. The dining hall would fall silent every now and then, so he walked around and talked to people, uh, bolstering morale and uh, seeming naturally suited to the role. That's surprising. Um, he's been a big surprise and uh, in a good way. I think he's adding a lot to the game already. He wasn't exactly a jokester, but everyone who uh, talked to him seemed to be having fun. He even gotten a faint smile out of Haruchan. Wow. I wasn't jealous or anything. I did wonder why Chemi hadn't told me much about her specialty. And honestly, I had no right to be jealous. I'd already used my looping to get together with two women. No, doing what I did back then seemed the best thing to do in those situations, and... Putting Harachan aside for the moment, both Jimmy and Rikakusan were really charming. Jimmy was a bit unhinged at her core, but uh, Mitsuji wasn't all that different. Rikakusan was fun, and her two-faced nature was kind of attractive to me. But, well, I really wasn't in a position to think about what came after the mist cleared. I wish to talk to you, Haruaki-sama. Oh, sorry, I'm a bit busy here. I'm sorry, my apologies. I was making dinner with Kaori-san. I'd invited her to do it, so we'd be well-fed and ready for tomorrow. Of course, this was to distract her from reality. I didn't want her unpleasant nature to take over and make her throw an aconite into the food, so I took it upon myself to cut the veggies. As I worked, I watched what was going on at the dining hall. I could see most of the faces from the counter. Last time, the first day was relatively peaceful, but this day was even more relaxed. Kansan's incessant prayers and Kansan's continual state of high alert made it a bit uncomfortable, but that was it. One reason for the good atmosphere here was the fact that no one had died yet, so it was still possible that it was just some sort of sick joke. Another reason was the presence of uh, the one who died in all the previous times, Hashimoto-san. He was a master at helping everyone lighten up. I could even include Mamiya-san as a reason. Hashimoto-san was alive, and she wasn't a wolf this time, so she wasn't hysterical like in the previous loop. Though she was writing something with a troubled frown on her face. Uh, gathering material, I assume? I'm not sure I'll turn this into an article, so I'll go with no for now. Uh, it was interesting, though. The occult? Yes, I just thought that the local story doesn't seem very Japanese. Oh, I'm a bit interested in that. Um, can I even talk about this? What might take on the local legends of Seiyu? Uh, who knows? I'm kind of interested. Uh, I don't give a damn. I have anything better to do. What about you, Richan? This is your thing, right? No, uh, we're concerning the divine is the Megarama's responsibility, but I'd be lying if I said I was not interested. Uh, things were going just like they had last time. Everyone was interested in what she had to say, and she revealed her knowledge about God slaying and servant worship. Uh, Susanoo beating Orochi, Aesop's fables, Yomotsu Ukami, aka Izanami. Then Tasan became upset just like last time. The only difference was that I wasn't involved in the conversation. It's interesting that I feel like, um, I can see that there's differences in how a Haruaki is as a, as a wolf, uh, because we have to do things differently, but obviously people don't know that because they don't know what our personality is like because we're new. Uh, but there's already differences in how we're interacting with everybody. Um, okay, let's leave it at that, though there's something that has me curious. I want you to tell me about the song that's on here. Oh, she herself mentioned it, huh? Yeah, it led to just about the same words as last time. Mommy some pointed out how the lyrics had a lot to do with the feast. She began questioning the parts she didn't understand, such as the badger, and Kinyosuke Shi, among uh, others, answered her. Interesting, but, hmm, the stranger the badger disappeared. I wonder why. The thing I pointed out last time was now pointed out by Hashimoto-san. He and Mami-san continue, uh, continue examining the relationship between Prada Shinai and the feast. Tassan mentioned that the badger was a servant of the Yokami-sama, and that there was a statue in the Shinai shrine. She also talked about the late uh, Gensan's word. The badger was waiting for the Yokami-sama to return. I have a bad feeling about this. What if there's a badger among us? Wow, alright, so he's kind of taken up the, the sort of logical... Uh, human side that we were uh, sort of filling. He raised the same suspicion as I had. If Akshima-san had participated in the previous feast, uh, then this uh, Gensan must have been there too. They had a badger there, and he might have left that uh, as an indirect warning. Ah, uh, come on, Hachimura-san, that's just a guess, right? Well, I guess there's no conclusive evidence. Now it's time for something new. Ukami, Yomotsu Ukami, great god. Hachimura-san, I think I realized something amazing. I'm listening. Um, this might feel abrupt, but do any of you know the origin of the name Shinai? She'd been curious about this in Kamfujiyoshi too. What of it though? Uh, I'd heard that Mount Shinai is officially Mount Sarunashi. Saru probably uh, became Saru while Nashi became Nashi. Okay, and those are like different kanji and stuff. Uh, that's wrong, uh, Nosato-sama. 
Uh, Shinasama has always been Shinasama from the start. The authorities just changed the kanji in the Meiji period because it was too hard to read. Hmm, the other way around, eh? So it was always Shinai. Uh, Yamawaki-san, do you know where it comes from? I don't. It's probably a kanji trick. Mami-san ripped out a page from her notepad and put it on the table. Shin Nai, the Nai kanji is made up of the kanji for big and show. She wrote down the relevant kanji. And then when you switch them around, she then wrote the kanji for big, then show, to the right of it, then shin to the right. The result was that, to the left uh, side of the kanji for god, there's a, a radical for show. And it's even more obvious in its old form. This means uh, that the result is ukami, great god. Shinai Sami equals ukami sama. Isn't that the intention? What? Wait, is she saying that, like, both are the same? Oh. Pure nonsense. Has uh, unshouted hysterically. You could hear it in a voice that she was shaking up. Oh, that's a, that's a big revelation. And yeah, they're not going to take kindly to that. Because the Ukami-sama is, like, the enemy. And, and Shinai is, like, the one that they worship. And then when the wolves get their role, it's kind of reversed. Where it's just like, oh, they're worshiping the Ukami-sama. And, like, the Shinai-sama, the Yobibito or whatever, are, like, the... Um enemies or whatever but like both of them are you know worshiping the same god essentially interesting of course she would be according to yasumi's legend the humans and servants killed the wolves the yukami sama however it reinforced my theory mm. i had lots of clues that led me to think that ukami and great lichinai were one and the same as you said the corruption was one thing another thing was the fact that uh, he was neutral in battle between humans and wolves or yomi bito and wolves Yet another thing was the local outlook on life and death. If people went to Yomi upon death, they would go there regardless if they were hanged or killed by wolves. That was why they said rise not, it meant go to Yomi and don't return. However, in the Shinai faith, the mountain was a place where corpses were buried, so it wasn't strange for it to be considered the same as the world of the dead. Anyway, Izanami lost her life after the birthing many gods, and after a lot of trouble ended up becoming the goddess uh, in control of the Nino Kuni. Nino Kuni? Another name for Yomi, beyond the world. There's also Nino Katasu Kuni. Some say it's somewhere beyond the sea, while others think that Nino Kuni is just a place without Yomi, or within Yomi. Maybe I was reading into this too deeply, but Nino Kuni, Country of Roots, gave me an image of the underground of a tree-covered mountain. Wait, wait, wait. Sure, that's not a stretch. What's the point of hiding the great god side of Ukami anyway? Maybe they did it so there wouldn't be any confusion with the Umiwa shrine, or maybe they warped it to incorporate it to Shinto. Or maybe they need to hide the faith? Hide the faith? They could have been in a situation where they couldn't worship the Ukami-sama in public, so they had to hide it. They might have protected the faith by making it change shape, like how during the Edo ban on Christianity, early Japanese Christians worshipped Maria Cannon instead. Also, it's not unusual for a god's main servant to be confused for the god himself. This might not sit well with some of you, but legends and myth can change uh, not just through borrowing aspects from other legends and myth, but also through political events. There was a time when myths and government were closely tied, so myths had to change whenever the politics did. If settlements merged, their gods would marry, while gods of places annexed through war would become the conquerors, gods, servants, or demons. Or maybe they merged separate gods into one. The people shaped them according to the power balances of their day. That's why powerful gods and devils have many other names, forms, and incarnations. Uh, these are remnants of long-forgotten faiths. The legends and myths that, uh, that have lived to this day survived through countless such changes. Of course, they would have contradictions. With that in mind, if you look at it from that perspective, the meaning of prayer to Shinai changes a lot. Though, I don't know the truth, of course. After all, the song doesn't mention anything about wolves or guardians being opposed to each other. That was true. Now, if you, Kami, or Shinasan, was still on good servant master uh, terms with the four no five guardians, perhaps he'd give the people the power of the guardians and use the song to inspire them to fight Yomi Bito, in other words, among themselves. She went that far with this audience? Yeah, I feel like she's about to get shot in the face by Konzo or something. Uh, apologies, but hearing that is not pleasant in the least. Exactly, don't talk to me no more than us. Naturally, Rikakusan and Taisan had something to say about that. Oh, we are truly sorry. Uh, we are inquiring into these legends and myths because they seem credible. If they didn't, we wouldn't have participated in this uh, and instead insisted on leaving and calling the police. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. It's, uh, I'd say you're half-trustworthy, uh, series I was on. No one here is actually suspicious yet. But it just so happened that the badger was almost left out of the legend. Both the legend and the feast rules were transferred uh, through word of mouth. We're simply afraid that you two, despite your extensive knowledge of the legends, happened to miss or forget something important. And that's also not including that uh, Tyson had forgotten to include like four or five different details when explaining the feast in the first place that he had asked questions about. So he should absolutely be questioning um, all of the details of the feast, especially when, you know, his life is at stake. Uh, it is true that I cannot deny the possibility completely. Wasasama, but, well, uh, at its core, it's more simple than it seems. Yasunaga Oribe-kun, was it? Oh, yes? Uh, we agreed that humans wouldn't lie. But if there was a human that sided with the wolves, a badger, basically, he or she would surely lie or do something drastic for the sake of the wolves. Uh, don't you agree? That's true, even if it has nothing to do with any badger. Uh, we should be wary of such a case. But, 
An impulsive liar and ally to the wolves, even if they're human. We'll hide them on the spot, right? Yoshitsuku Kun, who'd been sitting at the corner of the room and staring uh, at a wall in boredom, suddenly spoke up. He wasn't wrong in the least, which was probably intended by Hashimoto san. It appears we'll have to avoid doing something we, w we would regret. That's true. You don't have to tell us. We all live honest lives. Shinai sama is watching over us always. Uh, I like that. It's a simplistic faith that brings out the best of humanity. With that, I finally understood something. You know Hashimoto was the same type of person as me. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, he's taken up the, a lot of the similar roles that we were taking up before. Um, he controlled people through speech and manipulated their emotions through words to put himself in an advantageous position. I wonder if there will be a loop where we're on the same side. I don't know how many more like actual like roots are left. I feel like probably not as many um, as I would think because we have at least half the keys. We're probably going to get more in this loop. And then there's still keys that need to be used on the first loop. Um, so... I actually don't know how many more, like, loops where people would be different, um, guardians and whatnot are even left. But I feel like us on the same side would be, like, really powerful. The difference between us <clears throat> was that his conscious uh, presence and persuasiveness was far above mine. And he was a human, an enemy to us wolves. Harachan was in a seat near Yasunaga-kun, and Mochi's not saying a word. Uh, pretending to pick something up from the counter, I crouched down and looked at kaori -san. Uh, with her back to everyone, she cut veggies and threw her expression. Uh, wasn't as bad as before. It was still full of anguish and unease. Time passed uh, by as everyone chatted. Ate a larger dinner than ever before. Chatted a bit more, then split up. So, okay, so it sounds like he was able to sort of... Uh, Hashimoto was able to say something to Yoshitsugu that is going to make him not confront us at night. Um, because that would be easy. But I can't imagine what would happen if Yoshitsugu died to the corruption while Kaori was out as a wolf-like killing. I, I think she would even be more distraught than before. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. But yeah, um, Hashimoto is proving to be a big threat. So I wonder, are we just going to kill him at his first chance at a feast? Or we're just going to like kill him like right away? <laughs> Who knows? The only noticeable thing in the moment was when mami san tried to ask kanza san about the previous feast. Hashimoto-san stopped her, though. I noticed Harachan make a face. Uh, part of me was relieved by that. Oh, no, she's going to say something creepy. The previous feast took her parents, and it was time she went into the mist and lived to tell the tale. Uh, it would have been bad if she'd gone crazy again. Hashimoto-san seemed to have noticed that possibility, uh, so he'd stop mommy san to prevent it. Was it really uh, good to help him survive? A part of me actually believed that. Sure, without him, uh, I'd been a human and survived the feast, but it didn't solve anything. Becoming a wolf and making an enemy out of him was just as, uh, an unfortunate side effect that came with letting him live, and I decided to accept that. After the dinner, uh, right when everyone was preparing to split up, Hashimoto-san whispered something to Takumi-san. Takumi-san's expression suddenly turned serious. Hey guys, listen up. Apparently, Hashimoto-san told, told him... Uh, Hashimoto-san had told him to should say something. Okay, that is... I, I had to read that to make sure that uh, it's just like a, a mistranslation or something. Um, probably Hashimoto told him to say something. And Takumi-san did exactly that. Or that he should say something. Uh, we didn't hang anyone today. That's why, even if there are wolves among us, I want to believe they won't kill anyone tonight. If that happens, we won't have to hang anyone tomorrow either. That ain't happening. Maybe you're right. But if it does happen, that means that one of us here will be gone for good. Uh, these will be your final moments together. Keep that in mind and tell them everything you have to. You'll have less regrets that way. The bright mood suddenly changed. Oh. The mood turned heavy as everyone exchanged handshakes and gave their thanks to each other. Chemi, Harashan, even Yoshizuku kun became teary-eyed as kairi san said uh, these words to her sons. If I'm gone tomorrow, live strong, you two. She was a wolf, but her words were so honest that they both listened without a word. The village heads here seemed lonely, uh, giving Tai-san and Takumi-san fuel for doubt while Mochi talked to the old wolf guy. It was a moment uh, when the relationships became very clear. Oji-chan. One particularly impactful moment was when Harachan approached her lowly-looking grandfather. Her eyes were still red from the goodbyes to Yasunaga-kun and Mochi. Uh, Oji-chan, if I don't wake up tomorrow, ain't happening. For a moment, it looked like he knew what she was, but then... No way, you yourself... Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> no way, you yourself said the wolves will kill. Are you trying to be nice to me by lying to me alone? Kansan didn't know how to respond, or rarity for him. Uh, I don't need that, so just listen. If I die, try not to drink too much, even if I'm not here. Haru. Kansan slowly extended his hand to her, but it was too late. Harachan had already turned around. A grandfather and granddaughter, both awkward beyond belief. After watching their exchange, I was actually relieved that Harachan didn't uh, say anything uh, she shouldn't have, which made me question my own humanity again. Yes, now Kud must have been in a similar state of mind the first time. Feeling sympathy for the first uh, wolf I'd encountered, uh, I gave Chimmy, who had approached uh, to give <coughs> her goodbyes to me, some half-hearted nice words. I'd done the same for Rikakasan, who'd finished the exchange with a silent but resolute farewell. Uh, I forgive you for what happened during the day. I uh, don't want to leave any regrets floating around if we don't meet tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Uh, that was that with Harachan. Uh, the disgrace on my name was cleared, and she now neither disliked or liked me.
Uh, sorry for taking your time. Good night, people. Takumi-san nonchalantly con con concluded the event. Everyone silently began leaving the dining hall. I hope you come back too, Fusei, she san. Uh, <clears throat> we were done with the after dinner cleanup, so I had uh, no reason to stay behind. I didn't sense anyone in the mist, but that was because I just couldn't, not because there was no one there. Everyone was probably using this as a chance to have the secret talks they couldn't, or just silently listening for those. It was probably a good idea to thank him. I heard someone's voices near the stairs uh, to the dorm. Mami-san was talking to Hashimoto-san right where she died last time. How serious are they? Completely, I would say. That means uh, we'll be killed if we act suspicious. Like every journalist knows, the scariest things in the world are humans. Yes, even in a call matters. When someone dies and there's proof, it's always done by humans. Um, excuse me. I just heard eavesdropping, but it would have been bad if they noticed, so I called out. Uh, Fusei Shikun, <clears throat> you scared me. I'm sorry. Hashimoto-san, thank you for what you did today. I did something? If things continue like they did, I would have been killed. Oh, haha, <laughs> well, if that happened, we would have surely been next. Ha, huh, that's true, but really, thank you. Uh, no need for that. You helped us win the miss game, so let's consider it even. Okay, but is it really bad to walk around? Uh, sorry. Is it really bad to walk around at night? It seems like a good time to escape. Uh, I suggested that too. I don't think it's a good idea. <clears throat> I've never seen a mist so dense. You'd get lost if you uh, went to the mountain at night. It might be small, but it's still dangerous. Also, the residents here consider that a taboo, and they're probably the bigger danger. You think they'd attack us? <laughs> oh no, ha, huh, I don't think so. It's just that belief can sometimes make people see illusions. If we're surrounded by those who believe, we will eventually join the ranks. From my experience, the best thing to do in these situations is to distract yourself by trying to think about something else. Uh, those are some meaningful words. You don't believe in any legends, do you? Uh, I don't think about whether I believe or not. That's something for the specialists to think about once they've assured their safety. Right, Kujan? I don't know. I'm not sure if I can make an article out of this. Uh, personally, I just want to leave this place in peace. I see. I hope that happens. That was the end. I bid them good night. One of my own way. Alright, ooh, we're back to our place. Alright, I really want to see. I'm I'm not sure if we even get control of ourselves at night. Is Are we just getting possessed by something that, that then kills, um, where we don't have an active role in it? Do we just freely walk around at night? Like, how does this work? I'm so interested. Uh, I hadn't met anyone else on my way back to the prefab. Yoshitsugu kun didn't invite me to go out at night, and neither uh, Chemi nor Rikakusan visited to have a talk. They are probably satisfied with the goodbyes in the dining hall. Everyone used uh, to struggle at this time because they hadn't felt like they'd done everything they had to. This time was different, though. Everyone was calmly waiting for the wolves to strike, fully ready for it. The humans were in the perfect mental state. There was nothing for them to worry about. And it was all because of Hashimoto-san. Then there was the exchanger just now. Oh, uh, well, if that happened, uh, we would have surely been next. To me, that sounded like I didn't do it for your sake. No need for that. Uh, you helped us when the mist came, so let's consider it even. And that was like, you sure helped us at a strange time, huh? He seemed reasonably suspicious of me. Was I just overthinking it? No, that would be overly optimistic. Uh, it was clear to me that he made it past the first day better than anyone so far, even myself. If he was that talented, he must have already analyzed the situation and noticed that something was strange. They happened to have their tires burst, uh, then be given rooms, and gotten caught up in the feast. It was clearly orchestrated, and I was the only one who stood out as a suspect. I'd been chosen by a village head, joined them uh, in their van, and actively gave them a place to sleep. The situation was made even worse by the fact that they were right, and that I was a wolf. Since I couldn't mention the looping, I couldn't really say that I was their savior. Not only that, but he was the monkey. He secured a good role in relationship with the others, and had a surprisingly keen eye in mind. He'd have been uh, an extremely reliable ally. I really appreciated it when he presented the idea that we shouldn't hang anyone today. After all, at that moment, just like Kanzo san I thought uh, that not hanging anyone was foolish. Thus, I thought that he was foolish too. But now, because of his idea, everyone became somewhat ready to accept someone's death, and to unify uh, to defeat the wolves responsible. He also succeeded in preventing the lynching way smoother than I. I could only create a stalemate while he actually talked to people into voting uh, for or against hanging. Kanzo-san didn't want to look uh, like he broke, so he hadn't changed his opinion, but he was still pretty accepting of the idea not to hang anyone. Hashimoto-san did it with great finesse, and it was something I couldn't do. We'd eventually find out if it was a good thing or not. Or rather, they'd decide based on what uh, we wolves did today. However, I'd already felt like I was falling behind him. Would I really have to defeat him? There was Mamiya-san too, she was way more stable and smart than last time. The way she pointed out that Shinai was probably Yukami or Great God showed that she would be extremely useful in finding out the truth. She'd also noticed and mentioned the badger without my help. She'd probably noticed it last time too, but hadn't mentioned it because she was a wolf. This time, with Hashimoto-san's suggestion, they decided they would hang all liars regardless if they were wolves or the badger. That was a smart move. It kept the humans from lying, uh, just for the sake of it, and counted the badger whether it existed or not. They were a pretty balanced pair. Mamiya-san was blunt and straightforward, while Hashimoto-san gently uh, reproved her and provided only the best solutions. They were a much better team than I expected, and the fact that they were enemies was pretty bad for us. As a wolf, I had to consider the other humans too. Especially the Orbe brothers. After all, their mother, the demon who tried to kill everyone and swallowed her last words for their sake, was a wolf this time. If I didn't go about this the right way, I would be the one to die. 
Haruchan probably wouldn't want to kill uh, Yasunaga Kunamoshi either. Kanzu-san was her family too, but I wasn't sure about their relationship. Still, I didn't think she'd want to kill him. And finally, can I really kill Jimmy and Rikaku-san? Uh, though it was all made void by the looping, they liked me and I liked them. Would I really whisper sweet nothings to them during the day, only to kill them at night? I didn't want to do that. Hmm. Uh, that thought was my last before my consciousness faded. Okay. Are we just going to wake up and then someone's dead? Or, huh, huh? Okay. I jumped up, throwing the blank to the side. Why was I asleep? Then I have something to do as a wolf? I could feel myself turn pale as I realized I just made a huge mistake. But the next moment, I noticed something that terrified me in a whole different way. There was something next to my legs? Unable to understand uh, what was what, I let fear take control and pathetically backed away. Nothing was happening. I reached into my bag, took out a flashlight I got from the convenience store and turned it on. Oh, what are we going to see? What the hell was all this? It looked like the parts of a costume. Particularly the, sorry, particularly the kind used in action hero shows. No, that didn't seem right either. It was uh, some traditional ritual clothing. Did we get possessed, go kill somebody, and then we're waking up as, like, right after we kill somebody? Bracers, tabby straw, zori, a faded kimono, and hak hakama, all of it smelled awful, like half-dried laundry being boiled. There was something that stood out more than the rest. It was a kimono underskirt with some blurry sutra-like text on it. There was another piece of cloth with similar text on it, and it was connected to something weird. Oh, was this a mask? Okay. A noble gift we've give, uh, given you. Uh, you should wear this and cleanse yourself. Okay, right, I think I told us to wear this. We were supposed to put this on and cleanse ourselves? The bad smell made me really apprehensive. Didn't they have the order wrong? Didn't cleansing come before putting on some sacred clothing? That reminded me that I hadn't cleansed myself before sleeping. Wasn't that bad? Remembering the situation, I checked the time again. The phone I charged with the battery showed that it was 10 o'clock. Great little Shinai had momentarily put me to sleep to bring this here. What if I hadn't woken up? Man, uh, uh, were they treading a fine line here? That aside, I was basically being told to put this on and go outside. I gathered my resolve. Okay, okay. The way they made it described, uh, I was like, oh gosh, I'll be next to a dead body, but no, okay. That also I don't think would be very satisfying because I feel like us as wolves need to at least choose a target. Um, otherwise, I mean, we're not really playing, you know, the quote unquote like game like from our side. Oh, look at us. Uh, was this good enough? Though the lighting here was poor, there were fewer pieces than I thought, so I could put it on without much trouble. It was unexpectedly well designed, and from what I could tell, it was hand sewn. Uh, the main, uh, did wolves even have those? It seemed to be made of rice straw. It didn't seem cheap at all, and though I couldn't be sure, it seemed to be designed to look divinely imposing. The mask seemed to be a wooden carving with insane amounts of detailed work put into it. A true masterpiece. By the time I put it on, I didn't care much about the smell. It wasn't hard to move in or anything. The inscribed cloth at the bottom was connected to the belt. I put it on like it was a traditional grass skirt, and it wasn't a big hindrance for running or anything else. The cloth connected to the mask, and it, sorry, the cloth connected to the mask hid the face like some kind of stagehand's clothing, and I could only see ahead through the gaps uh, between them. The wolf-like mask itself was simply resting on my forehead. As I put it all on, I found a bucket and a ladle among the items. It was full of water, and I knew I had to cleanse myself with this. I was a bit apprehensive about this, but I took out some water and poured it on my head. Uh, it jumped off the right straws, making my shoulders wet or spreading across the area. Was I doing it right? I was still worried, but just putting it on was meaningless, so I put my hand on the door and sent something bad outside. It wasn't anything vague, like bloodlust or evil mojo. Uh, it was sounds I could actually hear. I heard grass being parted. I heard the sounds of something walking through the sand. Shallow breathing, low growls, distant roars full of malice. It reminded me of the last time I was locked in the outhouse and I sent something bestial outside. This was exactly the same as last time. There was something outside. Lots of them, in fact. Last time I'd only survived because I held the door shut when something was about to open it. And I had to go outside this time? I'd be okay just because I was wearing this? No way. It seemed like a sick joke. Oh, but I really wanted to see it. What a familiar sensation. Just then the doorknob clatter. I was like, if there's no choice, that means that this is the way to go and we didn't mess up the cleansing. Fusarisu-san, are you awake? I still heard beasts outside, but the voice clearly belonged to a girl, Haru Makishima. Haru-chan? Don't call me that. Is it safe? If you wear the mask and cleanse. Was she telling the truth? Was it really her outside? Even if it was some sort of illusion, if I didn't open, my presence in this flow of events would be pointless. I fired myself up and unlocked the door. Whoa. Uh, at the moment uh, I opened the door, a short I saw a short wolf that scared me like hell. You're too loud. Are you really Harachan? Yeah, look. She moved the cloth covering her face, and sure enough, it was Harachan. Uh, she was clad in a wolf outfit and had the bucket and ladle in her hands. Uh, you need to take yours, too. We're bringing these? Yeah, we need to spread water as uh, as we go. She uh, took some from her bucket and spread it behind her. 
That actually was followed by squealing sounds. I felt something squirm and run off. What is that? The brink of the, uh, of the corruption. She spread some more water. This time on me. Uh, buh, it's cold. Hey, what are you doing? She, uh, she repeated it a couple times with great intensity to boot. How much water do you have? You're going to run out. It's because you haven't cleansed yourself at all. I was supposed to be completely drenched. As if she felt that, explaining it was pointless, she just touched the cloth uh, near her waist. Sure enough, it was completely wet. Uh, can I ask something? What? Assuming that's how you're supposed to do it, how did you know that? I'm not sure why, but I just know. Are you hiding something? I'm not. Uh, we're both wolves. You shouldn't hide any. What are you worried about? Those words shut me up. Well, <clears throat> I get how you feel. I've calmed down already, so uh, you'll be, you'll soon be used to this too, I think. All right. I wasn't satisfied, but I backed down anyway. Uh, by the way, if you're not used to talking polite, uh, you don't have to. Please don't act like we're close. Let's uh, go. Kairi-san is waiting. Yeah, the chasm between us was wide. Or maybe Chemi and Rikaku-san were just too easy. Apparently, Harchan and I walked through the mist without any light. I took out my small flashlight. What's that? It's so cool. And it was met with a weird reaction. You can have it. I have another one. I prepared them in case I ended up running away with someone at night. I sure as hell hadn't expected to be a wolf, though. Whoa, really? Yeah, it's dangerous in the dark. How'd you get to me anyway? I know Yasumi's is passed by heart. Made sense. It was dangerous regardless, though, so I just gave her one and uh, showed her how to use it. Just make sure no one knows about it. It'd be really bad for us if they find out we walk around at night. That's true. All right. She spread some uh, water again, then put the ladle back and took the flashlight. You spread the water now. Uh, she led me through the dark path. I could barely see anything, but I did sense something beastial in the darkness. It was clearly hostile towards us, and several of them were surrounding us from a distance. However, they didn't come any closer. They also backed away if I spread some water. The flashlight could barely make it through the mist, so it didn't help to see anything in the distance. It was pretty useless to be honest, but Harachan seemed to like it. She also swung it around like a sword, or rather a lightsaber. And what were those bringers of the corruption anyway? Actual Japanese wolves, per perhaps? Every now and then, I saw eyes light up in the mist. Besides that, I also heard growls and the sounds of something stepping in the sand. Dogs, right? That had to be it. Yasumiza was completely full of dogs right now. That expression made it seem adorable. But seriously? No way. If my assumption was right, the situation was way scarier than some simple supernatural phenomenon. I continued spreading water, too much of it, all the way there. So I was going to say, you're going to run out of water. Precisely, she said. <clears throat> a wolf of the same stature of Kairi-san stood up in the chair of the dining hall. It was very surreal. Uh, yes, I'm Fuseishi. You're Kairi-san, right? Yes, I was a bit worried. Uh, by the time I came, he'd already changed and was about to leave. You didn't have any problems? Uh, not really. Did you also know how all this works? Yes, I have no idea why, but I just knew it. It's strange, but uh, it probably has something to do with what Shinai-sama said. Uh, there were three of them, right? Is it supposed to be like that? I don't know. Uh, the journalist said that Shinai-sama uh, was Ukami-sama. Maybe that's why we have three of them? Uh, that means that there are guardians, one for each of us. Oh, that makes sense. That's good enough for you? I mean, you saw them, right? Right. That strange experience did actually seem supernatural. People tended to accept anything they could see. Then shall we go? Huh? Where? To kill. <laughs> I think we should, but I think this is a good cliffhanger. Um, who are we going to kill? Do we get a choice? Are we just at the whims of whatever Kaori and Haru want? Um, who knows? Will we be able to take multiple paths and see how that affects uh, us and get multiple keys out of it? I don't know. Uh, but I'm interested to find out and see. So hopefully you're enjoying uh, this route so far and are looking forward to more. If so, let me know, but I'll see you on the next time. So until then, peace out.